Alright guys, it's Westy here. Uh, today I'm bringing you another bit of uh, Aftermath DLC footage and uh, today we're looking at a gameplay on uh, Epicenter, one of the maps that's going to be included. And uh, here's the footage, it's got a bit of German commentary, just ignore that. In dieses Videos stammen. Wir übernehmen die Rolle der überlebenden Soldaten und das lässt uns DICE an jeder Ecke spüren. So wurden etwa die Charaktermodelle angepasst, wir laufen völlig dreckig und verschmiert durch die vom Beben zerstörten Straßen. Auch die neuen Fahrzeuge bekommen den Aftermath-Look spendiert. Deren improvisierte Do-It-Yourself-Panzerung passt perfekt ins Gesamtbild. So richtig Neues bieten die drei Jeeps allerdings nicht. Transporter mit einem MG auf dem Dach gab es schon im Hauptspiel. Einen ähnlichen Eindruck haben wir von der neuen Armbrust. Die klingt erstmal ziemlich interessant. Erstens belegt sie keinen der beiden Waffenslots, sondern wird als Gadget behandelt, weswegen wir in Aftermath sogar drei anstatt zwei Waffen mit uns rumtragen dürfen. Außerdem verfügt sie über drei unterschiedliche Munitionsarten. Entweder nehmen wir, wie hier, einzelne Feinde mit einfachen Pfeilen aufs Korn, bekämpfen Gegnergruppen mit Explosivmunition oder schießen Pfeile in den Boden, die als Bewegungsmelder funktionieren. Allerdings müssen wir dafür auch C4, Raketenwerfer oder sonstige Ausrüstung opfern. Ob es das wert ist, wird sich erst zeigen müssen. Auch neu im Aftermath DLC, im uns zur Verfügung stehenden Videomaterial aber blöderweise nicht zu sehen, der neue Scavenger Spielmodus, eine Variation des bekannten Conquest. Alle Spieler starten nur mit einer Pistole und wenig Munition, Fahrzeuge gibt's keine. Dafür liegen an zufälligen Stellen im Level Waffenkits, die eine Primärwaffe und ein wenig Munition enthalten. Auch nicht gerade die spannendste Neuerung, aber sicher eine nette Abwechslung vom Conquest-Modus, den es natürlich auch auf den Karten von Aftermath geben wird, inklusive Helikoptern, Panzern und 64 Spielern. At the very start of this video we get to look at the crossbow again and again it's using the 7 times optic like it was before and something I didn't notice in my video yesterday was, and a lot of people picked up on it so thanks for that, was the four different fire modes that you can see on the HUD down the bottom there. That's important because that means you can use all four different bolts uh, of the crossbow in one life essentially. You don't have to die then change the bolt to come and then swarm back in, which is a really good, really good idea. It's just worth noting, looking at the maps in general while there's not much else to talk about, that look how well designed it actually is, because I know that people have been saying that DICE were like, uh, they were going to be like, oh it's going to be really small maps and stuff like that, but that's not the case here I don't think. As you can see from the little mini map there, um, the flags are very close together which suggests this is scavenger mode, and if you actually look at the ticket count it was only about 150, which if I can imagine the scavenger mode would use a smaller ticket count like Tank Superiority did for Armored Kill. So. Um, everyone going all the map, uh, the flags are too close together and everything like that then I think we should just give it a chance first because we don't actually know if it's scavenger mode or conquest mode that, that, that we're playing here right here's another chance to see the crossbow in action this guy takes out one guy with a crossbow and then two with his gun after that but what we're more interested in is the sight he's actually using which is a Cobra RDS which is different to the seven times optic that he was using earlier and again we can see the uh, four different fire modes down there in the bottom so starting to learn a tiny bit more about it so it looks like that you can pretty much attach any sights to it that you like but then again we've only seen two sights for it so we're not exactly sure yet Okay, here's a chance to see the uh, one of the uh, modified vehicles in the game that we were talking about yesterday. Uh, and this one's called Rhino. Um, I think I mentioned in my video yesterday that I couldn't tell what the vehicle was called because there was an overlay on the video. But here today we can see it's called Rhino. And uh, what's interesting about this is you can see uh, a weapon on the side. And that, from information that I've read about on the internet and on Battlelog and stuff like that, that is actually um, a sort of remote controlled so that a remote controlled machine gun so that while you're driving you can actually fire that gun at the same time and this is a uh, another one of these uh, like do-it-yourself kind of things that um, DICE has been talking about where that weapons and stuff are just made from what they can find in the aftermath of the earthquake. This footage in the middle here is just stuff that we've seen yesterday so it's really not as important but what really is important is this bit at the end here where we see the rhino in action again where it's mowing down people with the remote control gun running over people and stuff like that but again notice the map in the bottom corner it was the scavenger mode map again or supposed scavenger mode map where the flags are very close together. Alright guys that's about it for this little review of the Aftermath DLC gameplay on the map Epicenter. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my little breakdown of it and I hope you enjoyed all the information. Um, as of last time I missed quite a, quite a few things. Uh, if you guys notice anything leave it in the comments and um, 
yeah, and then we'll upvote it and then get people to look at it so that um, they can see it at the top of the video just to note the things that I've missed. But yes, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. I hope you like the information that I've given you. And um, I've been Westy, and I'll see you in the next video.